John Legend tried to break it off with Chrissy Teigen, Usher's attorney says, you are responsible for you. Jesse Jackson Jr.'s estranged wife called out Tamron Hall in the couple's divorce lawsuit. John Mayer was trolling Nicki Minaj on Twitter. It's New York Fashion Week. NBC is shaking in its boots. We got the 401 on books. And we have our motivational quote of the week, photo of the week, and more. So stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. Hey, girl, how you doing? God, I missed you so much. Yes, uh, missed we you missed too. you guys too. Yes. Oh my God, the summer is over. I know. How was your summer? It was a weird summer. Mm. Weird feeling summer. Neo's gone off to school. Oh no, how are you feeling with your baby off to college? I feel like I just came home. Like, I, like stay greens. <laughs> I, I thought that I was going to be really sad about this. But I've been responsible for a person or people for so long uh -huh. that I just feel like I could just whistle in the damn streets. And real thing, really? I just, I, like, be sure like, you're not crying in your pillow at night? No. Talking about you free. Like, so this is the thing, right? I keep thinking, I'm like... So I can ramp up my comedy, I can go back to school, or I could just mm, have like a whole face. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, you did not just say I've that. never done all that. Like I've never had like the real time to do both. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Like I've, I've been a mom for since I'm 20. Okay. So. Like, now, it's time, now it's time to be a hoe. But of, at least a phase, but you can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't. On that note, you can't. You can't. I can't even do it probably because I'll try to fix their credit. You know, I'm still a mom. I'll be like, why are you just randomly messing with older ladies? What happened to you? Did you get hugged as a child? So then, so I. Oh my god. I'm just go back to school. I'll just go back to school. Okay, maybe yeah, maybe that. That's that's good. Start with that. Yeah. All right. It's kids in school too, so young guys. Yeah. Well, you know who should have went back to school. Cool. NBC because <laughs> <laughs> now they are regretting pushing out Tamron Hall to make room for Megyn Kelly because she's really not pulling in the ratings so you know how she had that whole thing but she's on, mean well, Megyn Kelly like remember she cursed out D.L. Hughley I was like something so beautiful so mean like it's so crazy to me because now they're in a panic that she's not going to be able to pull in younger and non-white audiences and anybody who ever watched on fox news she son? would never have that appeal uh, so who watches fox news but older decrepit people <laughs> like that that have a little hatred in their heart like what <laughs> it's a little hatred but yeah but that's the whole thing so now you know they're in a panic they don't know what they're going to do they don't know how the they debut is going to go and Tamron Hall, meanwhile, has moved on to Weinstein Company to create her very own new daytime talk show, Black Girl Magic. Love well, her. not so much, not so magical, because let me tell you this story. Girl, <laughs> no. right? So you know how when they say one door closes, the other one opens, mm -hmm. right? So another door opened for Cameron, for oh. Tamron, but I don't think that she's happy about this door. So oh. Jesse okay. Jackson Jr., right? Oh, oh yeah. Didn't Je you have a breakdown like a few years ago? Or something? Wait, but Jesse okay. Jackson Jr.'s the son uh -huh. the one that he and his wife are in a divorce okay. right and remember like a couple years ago they got caught up with some mis mis misappropriation of funds yeah. you remember that yep. stuff so okay so now they're getting divorced oh yeah and so Tamron Hall mm -hmm. is one of the people that's going to be subpoenaed oh that's weird. Like, how now, does she even like tie into it? Right, but that? like it was like like twelve different people that are being being subpoenaed under different jurisdictions. One of them being the um, police uh, superintendent Gary McCartney. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly why she's being subpoenaed, but what the court paper said is that she has information to the estrangement. Let me get that right. Estrangement of their. The, the breakdown of their marriage. Oh, wow. So, so she's I'm gonna not be... sure. Like, so it's going to be messy. So right. then, you know, Jesse Jackson Jr. is like, I don't even know what this is on. <laughs> I don't know why she's doing this. She's messing up Tamron's good name. That's what he said. He said, we're going to be vin we're gonna be vindicated. <laughs> oh, my God. I sound like that's her man. But it didn't do it with oh. But allegedly, See, I said sound. But Tamron coming for your edges now. Sorry, don't. Okay. <laughs> because he is handsome. I'm sorry, girl. Okay, but this is what happened, right? You got to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So I hope you God, if you get subpoenaed. So if they start asking you what kind of relationship and what Jesse Jackson's son said mm -hmm. is that it's purely professional, right? Okay. So, and his wife is kind of like, 
You'll see why. I mean. So we will see. And he was accused of cheating before. Right. So Mm -hmm. that was a part of the divorce stuff, too. So I'm just not sure. But we will sip our tea and watch. Oh, yes, we will. Sip, sip, sip. Mm. Oh, my gosh. So speaking of watch, did you see the U.S. Open at all? Any of it? I saw some of the black girl magic. I always, you know, see like the little flashes of black people going back and forth. Yes. That's how it goes. Listen, black girl magic <laughs> rule the U.S. Open. So, you know, while tennis star Serena Williams is home having her baby, future tennis champion, um, Venus, her sister, was holding it down along with Madison Keynes and Sloan Stevens. Yes. All three made it to the U.S. Open semifinals. And for the first time ever, the U.S. Open had two black women not named Williams in the finals. And you know who won? Sloan, right? Sloan Stevens. Right. <laughs> she was so happy. She made me laugh so much. What was she's like payday? Three point seven million dollars. Three point yeah. seven million dollars. And when she got the check, she's like, this is a lot of money. And she was so funny. She was so funny. So Congratulations to her. Congratulations. You know, it, it seemed like, you know, we just bring this kind of like genocide quad to certain things. Like, just put all your money behind black ladies. I'm telling you. <laughs> Rich, white, big establishment. What they say, always black, isn't that what they mm-hmm. say? Mm-hmm. Big establishment. We, we, we always bring it. Okay, so speaking of bringing it in comedy, <laughs> uh, Kevin Hart. <laughs> Kevin Hart. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. Um, Ooh. And, and, um, so, you, wait, do you watch Insecure? Oh yes. So Love. so you know you yes. What's what's her last name? How do you say it? Orgy? I don't I'm gonna say Orgy because I'm not gonna say it the other way. The, so the, she's joining hope. the cast of mm-hmm. Kevin Hart's new uh film called Night Night School. Ooh, nice. Right? Okay. So this is the premise behind the school. So it's adults in night school mm-hmm. trying to get their crap together so they can get their GD. Okay. Mm-hmm. So and okay. Tiffany Haddish is gonna be there. So, so you know it's going to be she is hilarious. Uh, she is she is hilarious. Hilarious. I, I don't know how Molly's gonna play because like yeah. I don't I don't really see her as a like, comedian right. per se. Yeah. Like I don't see her really, really with comic comedic timing, but mm-hmm. hey, you never know, you know. Exactly. That's Maybe she might excited. be playing it straight to their clowns. You never know. And then another thing, right, mm-hmm. that I read recently is that Spike Lee and Jordan Peele are gonna have a movie t- entitled The Klansman. Mm-hmm. What? Like so, it's gonna be okay. a horror oh, movie about black um, exploitation. I want to say exploitation, but but probably just a horror film about social consciousness. Yeah, I like, like that. I like that. Social justice meets horror. Like, I love that. That's like not something people really do. You don't really nobody, see that a lot. Like, that's gonna be his new lane, and and I can only think about it in um, uh, Django, right? Um, it was kind of yeah. sort of, but it was kind of like uh, Martin. Uh, what what what's that guy? Yeah. Like Kill Bill guy? What's that guy's name? Ooh. The guy that that wrote Kill Bill, what's or directed Kill Bill, what's Quentin the, Tarantino, right? Right. So mm-hmm. Django was like that kind of with the yeah. fast shooting and the, the right. But so, no, but it wasn't really horror though. It wasn't horror. No, it was horror. But for the white people, when they got, <laughs> I'm mad you said but, that. Uh, boom. Oh uh, lord. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> John Legend uh, revealed in an interview with the Guardian that he tried to break up with Chrissy Teigen and she was not having it. She just said no. Like, you're not breaking up with me. So the, the breakup literally lasted 30 minutes. Literally. Good for her. So she said this. So she tweeted on um, Twitter. It wasn't a typical breakup. He was on tour and his voice heard. And he was being a whiny face about everything. And so, yeah, I was like, no. <laughs> I love Chrissy Teigen. Well. I love her. I wouldn't break up with John Legend either. Like, I mean, I wouldn't j- break up with anybody that's getting paychecks like that. I would be oh, like, no, no, too. I'd be like, no. If Ray Ray was getting some checks, I'd be like, no. Wait, isn't it Amadou now? So I'm now you went to Ray Ray? Oh, because it's been the summer. It's been a weird summer. It's been a weird summer. It's been a weird summer. I'll, 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 I'll get it back together around my birthday because right now. Okay, so back to Ray Ray. Yeah, so she was like, hell no. And so they, 11 years later, a baby, a marriage, they're doing great. So hold on to you, to your man with the checks. Of course, that's what you're gonna do. Anyway. <laughs> wait, wait. We don't need to, okay, whatever. Uh huh. And hold on to us because we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're bringing you more of what's popping. Welcome back to What's the Four One One, and we got it, Joe. Mm-hmm. Girl, yeah. let me tell you about this one. Okay, so <clears throat> get my voice <laughs> together. <clears throat> Okay, you about to say, girl. Let it burn. Oh. Uh, let it burn. 
I can't, it's nothing I can do to get this boy together, but Usher need to get his shit together too. So let's see what happened. <laughs> so we all know about Usher, right? And um, oh my Lord. his uh, being in the news about mm-hmm. the STD that he was supposed to have given people, had sex with these people, and didn't let them know. The that, herpes, yep. Right, right. Yep. Okay, okay. So, right. So now... Lisa Bloom, you know who she is, right? Mm -hmm. Lisa Bloom, right? So she's an attorney that's trying to represent uh, a couple of people against Usher, right? So she's tweeting about it, Mm -hmm. like, how dare he and all this stuff, right? So she has two clients so far that says, and, and so now she says that one of her clients tested positive for herpes. Okay. Right, but first of all, when did... Did Usher have sex with this That's woman? what I'm okay. saying. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> That's my thing, but so okay. Then, so, so then Usher, right, his legal team is like, uh-uh, enough is enough. Uh-huh. So now he is he is um, denying every allegation. Mm-hmm. And then he's also, he said, generally and specifically denies each and every allegation contained in the complaint in its entirety thereof, including each purported cause of action contained therein. Okay. End quote. For, right? For okay. Legalese. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So then now we get to the documentation. Now the documentation says a little bit different, right? So it says, and the alleged conduct by the singer, which is expressly denied, was unintentional. Mm. And okay. Okay. Unintentional, and that each of the ac- accusers assumed the risk as any alleged harm. In quote. So I didn't do it, and if I did do it, I didn't mean to do it. And why didn't you protect yourself? How about that? Mm. I mean, okay, listen, not for nothing. I mean, I'm all for people being, you know, safe and doing what they have to do, and you know, being disclosing if you have something. But at the end of the day. He's right. Not for nothing. You're supposed to use protection to protect yourself. You don't know where this guy's been. And that can be anybody. And, you know, you thinking. You said this before. You said, uh, who would have sex with a, a superstar without a condom? That's what I'm saying. I'm like. You know I said I mean? me. Like, because at the end of the day, I'm trying to get a check. I'm trying to work it. Okay, sorry. No, no. See, Usher has been in the game for 20 years. Super famous. They're, I'm sure he has plenty of groupies. And I'm sure he's done it with plenty of groupies. They so you should have probably no sign idea. a contract. I would think at that point, you hear these stories about these like super uber stars that make you sign um, waivers and disclaimers and that kind of thing. So trust me, that should have been all. Yeah, but look at what happened to um, the guy who used to be on Two and a Half Men. Remember, he had AIDS, he had HIV, oh, yeah. and he was like... Charlie Sheen? Charlie Sheen, he was sleeping The around. guy from Two and a Half Men. Charlie yeah. Sheen. Listen, listen I can't. Listen. Two and a Half Men, who the hell is that? But I did. <laughs> <laughs> listen, she said, you know the guy you know from Two and a Half Men. You was a millennial. No, 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 no. Charlie <laughs> Sheen, this is a millennial, girl. No, this, no, this no. This girl just got out the womb. No, girl, stop. Okay, so, sorry. yeah, so that happened. So the whole thing is, like, he... I mean, they, they didn't protect themselves. What can you do? And it's been several years. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like this just happened. So how many, how are they going to prove, even if they do have herpes, that it was him who gave it to them? Well, Usher attorneys that? say that he doesn't have herpes. Well, so. I mean, that's all going to come out and, you know. No, it's not because they're going to settle. Like, so then I heard that it was a guy that alleged too, but you think it was just people coming out of the woodwork? Because now I'm yeah, not really thinking about that anymore. Yeah, because it was a guy who just jumped on a bandwagon. I was like, yeah, he slept with me, you give me. You know what I mean? And I'm like, come on. Come I was on. like, word. No, see, no. I was <laughs> like, uh-uh. I don't, I don't buy that one. You oh, know. Mm. Yeah. So we'll see. I should be letting it burn for real. I don't Yikes. feel that. He's a, li- he's a Libra. He's No, he's just sweet and nice. No. no? He's a star. He's a star. So that's, you're acting like that's a bad thing. Like, I'm not like, saying he's a, a star. <laughs> no, I'm saying thing. he's a star and he has his... He should, he, as he should, have his pick of the litter. the women that he could, or men that he could ever want, and yeah, so I do not think any of... And he has okay. children, so why just subpoena one of his ex-wives? No, no. I'm just saying, he's had sex unprotected with somebody, he got a couple kids. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see how this Let that out. burn on. Let it burn, burn on. Burn on. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So, John Mayer... Tried. He tried it. He he reached out to Nicki Minaj on Twitter and he said, listen, I spent an inordinate amount of time per day wondering if Nicki Minaj would like me or not. He tweeted that. Right? Really? That's right. what he did. This is just a joke. This is a joke. I don't know. I think he was, I think he was trying. I think he was, you know, trying to get with some Nicki Minaj. So Nicki Minaj being Nicki, she responded. She was like, tweeted. Would my body be your wonderland? Mm, 
referring to the song. Remember the song? 2001, the body's a wonder way. Remember that? I, yeah. I know Body Party from Sierra, but what no, is, so <laughs> you know, you know that song. I girl. don't know that song, so but, but so why is she talking about her body? Like because she's so, referencing his song, saying that would my body be your wonderland? Like in the song and how he was talking about, you know, he doesn't have any songs that have anything to do with the neck up. Oh, girl, I just don't get it, girl. Anyway, okay, but anyway, while waiting for Nikki's response, plenty of people on Twitter responded for on behalf of Nikki. They were like, "Yeah, go, girl," and then some people were like, "Wait a minute." Remember, this is the same John Mayer who, in an interview with Playboy, said this. Get this. I've got a Benetton heart and an effing David Duke. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. David so, Duke, the, the white supremacist, the KKK Klansman. So yes. That means he's killing shit. <laughs> no, oh my God, no. No. Oh, my God. What? Why does that have to be racist? <laughs> Mad like, racist. Who I would not I, like take a tiki torch and think of a like a. You I'm gonna have to cancel you. I'm gonna cancel you. I'm gonna cancel you. So I'm just saying, <laughs> why is that racist? I'm just saying, like super he racist. This means he's gonna kill some. You know what I'm trying to say? No, that means he prefers white women, and white women are superior to black women. That's and that's, not what. That's what that means. This is like if you just sleeping around. And then he later in the interview said, oh, I'm going to have to get my dating in line with my heart. So it's like his heart is like, you know, rainbow. Right. I guess like right, that. Right. time. And I'm like, mm. so. So what you, you trying to say? Like most. OK. I got a Benatar heart. But that's, and, what, but that's what I'm saying. So the, and a the fubu. point. <laughs> <laughs> you said a fubu for JJ. Little, I've heard it all. Little boy low. Little boy low. You He's do. a white man. White men date white ladies. Okay, so so I have my answer because I didn't even ask the question yet. My question was going to be: So should Nikki look at this statement that he made to Playboy back in 2010 and say, "Hell no"? In 2010. 2010. It was a 2010 uh, interview. Seven years ago. Yes. He probably he probably got some of that. Um, maybe <laughs> some, black girl magic is what I'm gonna call it. Like that changed your mind. Sometimes it changed your life. Sometimes it changed your religion. Sometimes it changed some shit. It changes some stuff sometimes, people, is what I'm saying to you. Like, when people say black girl magic, they don't just mean acting and singing and dancing. Not all the time. There's some other things that's magical, oh like God. what Pix Pixie does. Well, act, no? well, clearly he's thinking that because he says he spends okay, an inordinate so, amount of time thinking about Nicki Minaj. So leave his past racism. People, racists can change. <laughs> and he didn't say, he just said... Well, Nikki, okay, so this is what he said. So several years later... Reflecting on that like crazy interview because he said a whole lot of crazy stuff in that interview He was like I lost my head quote for a little while and I did a couple of dumb interviews and it kind of woke me up It was a violent crash into being an adult for a couple of years I was just figuring it all out and I'm glad I actually stayed out of the spotlight So it looks like good. For I mean you, if, if, if that's give the closest him a break. He can't give a like that's the thing media like stop Millennials give no, people a break they can change <laughs> You're so a millennial, you are. No, you no. Are. See, no. You said you Charlie a... Sheen was the guy for three and a half men. I had a brain fart. What okay. can I say? Like, I'm just saying. Can I, can I have that once in a while? It, let can me I? tell you something. Thank you. All right. What's that guy, Bill Maher, right? Uh -huh. Superhead. Sometimes the black girl magic change your life. I just, I just want to say I don't, I don't think, Nick, listen, I think John Mayer is a hot mess. <laughs> Forget That's about right. all of those so stuff. Was he safari. had so many women. So was Safari. Fearing. So was Safari. So she might like hot messes. So was Meek Mills jumping around doing Papa Willies in the streets of Brooklyn, oh, and then and no. then putting it on Snapchat and, and get arrested. Like this is the yeah. women that this is the women that she so liked. He done ran through too many women, and he said, He's a "I have star. put them through the ringer psychologically." He's a star. I put them through the ringer. This is a quote what's, from what's, him. What's, when was that? When did he do that quote? Quote. I don't know. Like, Probably it, no. 2000. No, like, absolutely not. This man is just saying, like, he, you know, he knows he has issues. At least he's owning up to them. Well, but he's saying, you know, wasn't. Why, why is he, all, the, all those hot women, right? Why is he picking Nikki? Because she likes men with issues, kind of, sort of. This sounds like an Ask Onika. This, cause this, is, a, this is a story it's for not, another day. I'm just joking around, actually. It's, Nicki Minaj, date who you want. You, she should date more. Like, Rihanna, that is my. Power See, to all people. right, that, that's the idea. That's no bra, like she just sitting there she doing her thing. Like I wish I could just have no bra. Like <laughs> if I had no bra, Listen. I'd be sitting on my breasts. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my 
my gosh. You okay. are crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Keep it locked. We'll be right back with more What's the 411. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. It's New York Fashion Week. Coming up next, our correspondent, Crystal Lynn, has an interview with designers and others at the Elegance of Africa Fashion Show. Good evening and welcome to What's the 401. I'm Crystal Henderson and we're here at Hotel Pennsylvania for the Elegance Africa Fashion Show. So we have OK here, the second designer that's going to be displaying his work tonight, Elegance Africa. Tell me a little bit about your design. Uh, my design is actually born um, from Nigeria. Uh, you know, this Are you from Nigeria? Yes, I am. Okay. okay. So um, what, I'm, what I, I'm doing is that I'm trying to uh, bring the flair of African um, culture and, and, and the way we do our designs and the clothing into the modern world, fusing it with the um, the vibrant market of Istanbul, where my actually my collections are made, uh, the Milan, the streets of Milan and the streets of Lagos, being that um, with the things that we do about the fashionista, everyday fashionista, the, um, the shirts are pretty cool, they can be used as dress up, uh, casual, laid back, it kind of covers pretty much everything and we come now with our traditional line also. So you design men and women? Actually for now I'm doing men, uh, next year we're going to enroll the women collection, uh, but right now we're concentrating on men. Just so to explain to me a male fashionista, because we always see women fashionistas, but a, man, a male like you, you can never get the, the, the role as like a fashionista, well, what is that? Well, a, a male fashionista is a guy that you know can put the swag anytime that they come out. It, it, it all, it's all about the statement, the fashion statement, when you come out, what you're wearing, how it contours to your body, it doesn't necessarily have to be baggy, I mean it's telephone fit, slim fit, or whatever you have, you call it, yeah, tailor-made. So that's where the flair that we're bringing into it, to make the, every guy that come out there to look like, wow, you know. The women can go crazy about it, talking about my man can look like this, and you, when you go out, you go out and you look comfortable. You know, when you go out, you make a statement, because when you walk by, people definitely want to be like, what does he have on? Who is that? And that is what we represent. That is what we're doing. Okay, we have Tsunami here. She's probably the youngest designer, am I correct? She's 19 years old. Are you still in school? Yes, I'm in college. What college do you go to? City College of New York. Are you studying fashion? Um, I went to fashion industries, but I just wanted to like go to a school to learn like business communication and get away from the fashion. But I'm still doing fashion on the right, side. So you do fashion on the side, but what are you studying in college? I'm business and communication. So, all right, explain to me a little bit about following your passion but still going back to school to get a degree. Because I know, I think that's important for people to know. Yeah, I feel like it only gets better if you're educated, you know about like different things in order to make your business a better business. So, I mean, I'm still doing fashion, I'm still learning every day, but I also wanted to go to school just to get like a basic education. Right, and that's important. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about your designs and what can we expect? Um, it's a, it's modern African twist type of thing, it's because it was created by me and my best friend. She's American, I'm African, so it's like a real mix of the two. So you see a lot of, um, one of our signature dresses is called the half and half dress, and it's like half African print, half solid color, so it really symbolizes like who we are and us as a brand. So tell us a little bit of what we can expect tonight. Uh, well, I do uh, mostly natural animal skins, forest type of things, and uh, I do a lot of recycling and take care of all of the animals that still want to be worn by the Native Americans. So I can assume that you have your own designs on right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly uh, leathers and furs and things like that. I do a lot of uh, eclectic, uh, one-of-a-kind type of pieces for entertainers and uh, people who want a fantasy. Okay, and I create the fantasy. No, talk about a little bit of fantasy. What is the fantasy? The fantasy in your mind about how you want to look or how you want to feel or what you might want on any occasion. I'll make it happen. And our photo of the week is of the fabulous fashion stylist June Ambrose. Oh, slay! She's on the red carpet at the Children's Defense Fund Annual Gala. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. 
And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Coming up next, Troy Johnson, CEO and webmaster of AALBC.com, is talking to Ruth Morrison about his trip to Marcus Books, the legendary independent black bookstore in Oakland, California. And it's one of the few bookstores that's left in the whole country. Yeah. Isn't that Close, crazy? Closing them all down. Mm -mm -mm. While I was in uh, Sacramento, I took a short drive out to Oakland, California. Uh, and something I usually do when I visit a new city, I try to check out all local bookstores. And I, you know, visited Marcus Books in Oakland, California for the first time, and they're a tremendous bookstore. I mean, just a, a wide variety of books, and they're a pure bookseller, too. And they're also a conscious bookseller. So I've been selling books for 20 years, mm -hmm. and I discovered titles in there that I wasn't aware of. And, you know, it, again, it just really emphasized the point how important independent booksellers are, physical bookstores with people who who appreciate you, love the culture, and are knowledgeable about books. My website can't substitute for uh, a physical bookstore. It might be a good supplement to, mm -hmm. or if there is no bookstore, it's a decent alternative, but it, it can't replace a bookstore. And Amazon's algorithms can't speak, be a substitute for a physical bookstore. So I, um, I just want to shout out, shout out Marcus Books because they're one of a, a number of institutions across the country that are doing great work. And um, Marcus Books is one of them and they've been in business for over 50 years selling books. Wow, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? It, it makes sense that a conscious bookstore would be in Oakland, California. So, yeah. yeah. Is that the birthplace of the Black Panther, Panther Party? Party. Yeah. Exactly. Our motivational quote of the week is, Sometimes he blesses us not in what he gives us, but in what he takes away. Preach. <laughs> this is a motivational quote provided to us by Denise Hurley. Thank you, Denise. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. That was fun, right? Yes, yeah, that, was fun. that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I can't believe it's over, but it is. That's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatsthe411tv. Yes, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 in 1 TV. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean, thanks for spending your time with What's the 4 in 1. 4 in 1, who's got the 4 in 1? 4 in 1, they got the 4 in 1. Who's got the 4 in 1? We got the 4 in 1. What's the 4 in 1? The 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. We got the 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. What's the 411? What's the 411?